Hello and welcome to the Consistency Project with E.C. Sinkowski. My name is Patrick Cummings, and every episode I have the privilege of having a discussion with E.C. on subject matters that range from nutrition to fitness to the choices we can all make to live a healthier, more functional life. By exploring both the principles at play and the actions worth carrying out as a result, it's our goal to get you thinking, get you moving, and get you taking more consistent steps toward optimizing your well-being. Thank you so much for tuning into the show this week. Hello, and how are you, E.C.? I'm good. How are you doing? Wondrous. We are going to talk about nitrates mm. today. <laughs> this is, and I, I feel like I say this every other episode, but this is one of those subjects that like, I've heard the word a lot and I probably nod my head and like, yeah, I know what that is. And I don't know what it is. So I'm, I'm, is. I'm curious and uh, interested in learning more about There's nitrates. at the end of this one, there, so be ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm the only one who's going to take it because okay. I'm the only one you can grade. Um, okay. So let's, let's just, as we always often do, let's dive into some background. Nitrates, what are we talking about? What do we need to know to get into this conversation? Yeah. I mean, like a lot of the podcasts, they sort of come to be when I've either had like a mass of questions or just like, okay, it's really time to talk about this on its own. And, you know, nitrates have already come up a bit. We talked about them way back in 2021 with the Meat and Cancer Risk podcast, but they've also come up more recently on the Getting Out of the Weeds podcast with Adrian Chavez, and then even a little bit with Crystal uh, Zuniga talking about cancer prevention. And so that was sort of the backdrop, like, okay, we, we've talked about nitrates a bit in, in meat, but then I recently got a question about beetroot supplements for athletic performance. Beetroot, like that? I know. Beet, okay, B-E-E-T, <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, beetroot. Now, when I say beetroot, I'm just talking about how we call them beets, like the red bulb part that's yeah. under the ground, but we're just saying beetroot often to distinguish from not the leaves, right? Now, beetroots do have a high concentration of nitrates and they've become a popular supplement for fitness in recent years. So I was just sort of thinking, okay, well, isn't this interesting? At the same time, we have these concerns about adding nitrates to meat. Similar, you know, the same community is asking questions about, well, maybe I should take nitrates for performance. Okay. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, this is kind of an interesting dichotomy here. Maybe we should do a full podcast episode to sort of, Hey, is there a difference between the two? And I think in this episode, we'll spend a little bit more time on the performance angle since we really hadn't covered that one before as much as the meat one. But I just thought it was like kind of an interesting dichotomy to take apart. It's probably the only contradiction in health and fitness that we've ever found. Right. Only one. Yeah. This is the only <laughs> one. Okay. So, um, what are nitrates? Yeah. And you've sort of hinted at some of them, but like, where do they come from? Right. Um, so we got beetroots and, and processed meat anywhere else. Like, is it the only place they exist? <laughs> That's it. No, <laughs> there are a lot of other, other sources of nitrates and nitrites j besides processed meat and, and beetroots. So these nitrates and nitrites, they're combinations of nitrogen and varying amounts of oxygen molecules. Sometimes there's two oxygen molecules, sometimes there's three. So nitrates and nitrites, they're widespread in the environment and also occur naturally in plant foods and in water. Now, usually our drinking water doesn't have a ton of nitrates, but in some places it is high, often due to fertilizer. So when we fertilize our crops, it's usually a mixture of NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so if you apply lots of fertilizer, the water nearby will often be high either because the fertilizer has leached down to the groundwater or there's runoff, right? Now, generally food though is going to be our largest source of nitrates uh, for most people. And um, besides plant foods, then the other sources of nitrates that we find in the diet are processed meat. So to kind of look across where are we getting most of our nitrates from, actually 80% of the nitrates we eat are from vegetables. Mm. So not from processed meat. That tends to be quite the minority of where we're getting them. Um, so unless you're in, in one of these areas that do have high nitrates in the drinking water, your largest source of nitrates is going to be vegetables. Now, there are also variations of how much nitrates are in different vegetables. Again, like beets are high, leafy greens are high, and then things like squash and tomatoes and peppers, they're at the, at the low end. But there's going to be a huge variation in what we find within the vegetables. But I do want to put it into perspective of, okay, well, how many how much nitrogen nitrates am I getting from vegetables versus processed meat? Cause it's, it's pretty interesting. So if we take a hundred gram serving of beets, um, that's not that big of a serving less than a cup. That's going to have 250 milligrams of nitrates, 250 in a cup, less than a cup of beets, a hot dog, which is not that, um, only about 42 grams that might only have four milligrams mm. of nitrates. 
So 100 grams of beets has 250. One hot dog has four. And a hot dog is at the high end of nitrate concentration for processed meats. So other processed meats tend to have lower. So you don't have to be eating that many vegetables to be way past processed meats in terms of nitrate consumption. Again, that's 60 time, 62 times more nitrates in beets than in one hot dog. Now, these foods also have nitrates. They're in lower con concentrations. I'm not always going to talk about nitrates as well because, oh my gosh, it's a 20-minute podcast. <laughs> um, but so that's just to kind of put in perspective that vegetables really are going to be our big source of it. And then things like those dried green supplements that people are asking about all the time, those have even higher concentrations of nitrates just because it's just the concentrated nutrients, right? The water's been removed. So people are getting a ton of nitrates from them. Um, and something else that's really interesting is one of these studies I was looking at was looking at the nitrate concentration across someone's whole diet. And so they took a diet that would be representative of people who ate lots of fruits and veggies. And they calculated that people on that diet would be having five times more the nitrates than what the WHO recommends as like mm -hmm. kind of the daily upward consumption. So you know, that's not to scare people away from eating fruits and veggies, but it, it's kind of make should make you pause and think, well, that's interesting. Maybe I'm getting getting too zoomed in on nitrates, right? Maybe I'm like fixating them as good or bad when really, OK, we know fruits and vegetables are good for us. Maybe I have to take a step back and understand, OK, what's the bigger picture there between processed meats and, you know, vegetables? Right, right. So, OK, so that's the next logical question, which is like we've talked about processed meats before. Um, as as you mentioned, we've done we've done episodes about it. So are the nitrates in those process, you know, the hot dog somehow different than the stuff in vegetables and the in the beet roots? Or are they the exact same thing? And this is not the conversation to have. Right, right. The short answer is that the nitrates aren't different between the mm. processed meats and the vegetables. So in so more hot dogs, less vegetables. That's what I'm <laughs> oh, gosh. Did, no. I, did I pass the pop quiz? Did I do it? No, we still have a little <laughs> bit to go. So maybe you'll okay, redeem yourself. All right, fine. I'll stay patient. <laughs> um, so, okay. In vegetables, we've got these naturally occurring nitrates and to a lesser extent nitrites, as we mentioned. Um, now, for processed meats, nitrites are added as like an additive and they're added for a few reasons first of all nitrates give us pro give the processed meats their characteristic color and flavor of cured meats that we're used to and perhaps more importantly the nitrites prevent meat from growing microorganisms within it like clostridium botulinum which is responsible for botulism <laughs> so we need to avoid that so yeah. this is a good thing of adding nitrates to our meat so that we do not have that another thing that the nitrates do it actually prevents the fat from going rancid rancid which is actually a less serious health issue than botulism but certainly if you go to buy a product and the the fat is rancid you're not going to actually buy it and so sales would be a problem so, you know, we have always this fear mongering in social media land about additives and how harmful they are. But we find once again, they're added for very specific and good reasons, a health protective one here. Um, now, the finished product after you've added nitrites will actually have nitrates in it which is what's naturally occurring in the vegetables, because that's what happens to these compounds over time. The nitrates will start to convert to the nitrates. And so this is why the processed meats have the same chemical form nitrates as those naturally occurring in vegetables. Okay, we're going to get further in the weeds. Here we go. <laughs> this Fair is to help. I know. We've already been in the weeds. We're going to keep going. Um, this is to help people understand kind of labels and marketing a little bit. So as we all know, there's this consumer push for people to eat clean, clean in quotes, right? And these natural products. And so in terms of these processed meats, people still want the taste. They still want to eat bacon and they still want the safety. They don't want botulism. They still want to buy rancid fat. But of course, the perception is that the nit added nitrates are harmful. And so they want to find some sort of natural alternative to that. That sounds fine until you realize that what they use as their alternative is just celery powder, which is high in nitrate. <laughs> so the end result is literally you're getting the same thing from a molecule mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. um, but here's where it gets really confusing. Under labeling requirements, only those products made with added nitrites are called cured where those that are made with celery powder can be called organic, natural, or uncured. 
but they literally ha end up having the same compounds in them. So this is now becoming like a great marketing ploy that really has no advantage to the consumer. They can say, you know, all natural, organic, no nitrites added, but yet the compounds that you're consuming in the conventional versus the all natural in terms of like the nitrates are the same. Interesting. We've talked about before this sort of the fear of, I don't know, chemicals is the word we used before, mm -hmm. but the, the fear of chemicals and the, and the blanket belief that like chemicals bad, all natural good, right. right? That seems like it's another one of those where we just, we're scared of something probably because we don't understand it. And so if you present it to us the exact same thing in a way that's less scary, yeah. oh, we're okay with that. We actually advocate for that. Totally, totally. Well, I mean, you could argue the microorganism that causes botulinum is natural, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah. well, that's harmful. That's a harmful one, yeah. Okay, so nitrates and nitrites in vegetables aren't different than the, the, the nitrates and nitrates in processed meats, whether or not they're organic and clean and et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So is there an explanation for why processed meats do seem to increase colon cancer risk where mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables do not, right? If they're the same molecular substance, mm -hmm. we still have this, the issue of, it seems like more of this is bad and more yep. of this is good. So what's yeah. going on there? Yeah. And just to refresh people from kind of the, the cancer risk, um, it's this rather consistent association we see between processed meat intake and colon cancer risk, where it's like every additional 50 grams per day of processed meat tends to increase your colon cancer risk by 20%. And remember, everybody has risk. Everyone who has a colon has risk. This is just kind of changing your degree of risk. But yeah, the million dollar question is why, like you just said, both have nitrates. Why do vegetables decrease risk and, and processed meat increase it? So of course, scientists are really still working on this to understand all of the exact mechanisms, but here goes my current summary <laughs> of, of knowledge. Um, so first to understand why there might be a difference, we have to understand what happens when we digest these nitrates on uh, nitrites. So a majority of the ingested nitrates are just passed in the urine 24 hours within 24 hours. But some of them, let's say five to 20% of the nitrates that you consume will be converted to nitrites. Mm -hmm. We're staying high level here. Mm -hmm. um, there are two potential outcomes once they're converted to nitrites. The nitrates might be converted into another nitrogen and oxygen containing molecule called nitric oxide, or the nitrites might be converted into compounds called nitrosamines. Now, nitric oxide, that's what you would want to think about, again, for a very basic overview podcast. That's what you want to think about as the good outcome. And this is why we actually think nitrates have a performance enhancing effect because nitric oxide does a lot of things. For one, it's a vas vasodilator, mm -hmm. meaning it opens up your blood vessels, mm -hmm. which means your heart would have to work less hard to pump blood and nutrients. You get higher blood flow at less work, right? And, and higher blood flow isn't better for just endurance exercise. You need that nutrient delivery for strength, you know, max repetitions for um doing something for hypertrophy as well. So you'd be able to do potentially more reps with less fatigue. So these are all good things in terms of exercise. Now, the problem is, you know, we want ultimately nitric oxide in theory from a performance point of view, but that's a gas. So we're, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to eat that. <laughs> so instead, we potentially take in these nitrates via the beetroots. <laughs> Those get converted to nitrites, which might get converted to nitric oxide. And then potentially we open up the blood vessels and off we go to a new personal record. <laughs> On the flip side, those nitrate, nitrites might be converted to what I said are nitrosamines. Now, this would be the bad outcome, and that's because nitrosamines are known to be carcinogenic, cancer-causing, right? So finally now, okay, what about the food would have an influence over these two outcomes? It turns out there's a lot of different factors of whether or not the nitrites become nitric oxide or nitrosamines. So vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin E are thought to inhibit nitrosamine formation while promoting nitric oxide. So it looks like our vitamins help keep away the bad and help promote the good. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is no surprise, starts to give some insight into why veggies might be good, right? On the flip side, things like heme, which is an iron containing compound, is thought to stimulate nitrosamine or the bad formation, as well as the presence of proteins, which are going to be in your processed meat, are going to stimulate kind of this nitrosamine formation. And so... Fruits, um, fruits and veggies, which are high in vitamins, are, again, likely having this protective effect, while the components in meat 
the heme, the protein are likely promoting kind of the bad outcome or the nitrosamines. Um, and this is why I just, even though that gets really sciencey and detailed, I just love it from the perspective of like, hey, this is why the context of food matters, right? We kind of mentioned like if we're just focusing on nitrates, we might mix, miss the bigger picture. We have to look at all of the influencing factors on that. And I, and even still, we're kind of just scratching the surface because things like the fat content or even the microorganisms you have present in your gut can also influence what happens to those nitrates. Um, but so, yeah, so when we're looking at processed meats, especially red processed meats, we're going to find them to be more risky. They don't have the vitamins and minerals and they have the iron containing compounds as well as the protein present that might push us towards more nitrosamine formation. Now, if I recall correctly um, on our Getting Out of the Weeds podcast with Adrian Chavez, he was talking about he doesn't worry too much about kind of some of the processed meat variations, kind of like the deli meats. Mm -hmm. um, not that they should be a primary factor in the diet, but he was like, okay, if you are gonna do kind of the higher nitrate stuff, maybe also think about having some uh, veggies with your turkey sandwich or something like that. And I, I think that can be a really great strategy for people to try to mitigate this. That's not a guarantee, but basically what I'm trying to say is the more processed meat you have in the diet, the more you also want to make sure that you have plant food or plant matter in the diet to hopefully counteract some of those potentially negative reactions that we just went through. Got it. So wrap your hot dog in lettuce. <laughs> that could help. Yes. <laughs> a very maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a very maybe. That, that's as good as we're going to get from you. Yes. Okay. A very maybe. Okay. So you had hinted at, you hinted at something that I want to um, pull on a little bit, which is perhaps a performance maybe impact uh, with nitrates. Mm -hmm. um, are they, is, is for those folks who are looking for a performance in uh, improvement in whatever they're doing, is this a, a possible means and methods to do that? Are, is beetroot juice worth a shot? Is it the secret? <laughs> is it the next worth a shot supplement TM? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to put nitrate supplementation or beetroot juice supplementation, um, in, in my recommendations for performance enhancement. Now, a lot of the studies that have been done from a performance perspective on nitrates, to be clear, have been done on beetroot juices. I'm actually not sure why they haven't done dosing with just like taking nitrates or nitrites as they would an additive. I'm not totally oh, sure what the limitation is there, but most of the studies on performance have looked at it from a beetroot juice perspective. I did find that one study um, kind of compared isolated nitrates to vegetables and found that the veggie sources actually had a better effect on blood pressure. Why that's the case, maybe the whole is greater than some of the parts. But anyway, basically, I'm trying to say that a lot of these studies have looked using the juice. Now, the problem with using something like juice is there is a wide variation in the nitrate concentration among them. So there was this 2019 study that's titled What is in your beetroot juice, which I'm sure you... <laughs> <laughs> I sat up at night wondering that. What is in my beetroot juice? That's even this hard one, to say. <laughs> I know. I'm sure this is going to be the next paper you read. <laughs> it's in the show notes. But yeah, there's this huge variation in concentrations of nitrate and not just between products, which you could kind of understand, right? Between brands, like, okay, yeah. whatever. But even within the same pr product, there's wide variation. So upwards of 30% different nitrate concentration within the same product, and then a 50 fold difference between the lowest and highest concentrations when you look across all the 24 beetroot juice products. And mm -hmm. this, this makes sense when you kind of know a little bit about growing environments and different types of crops. It's just, there's huge variation in concentrations of nutrients based on soil type and environment and all the stuff that trying to find consistency among products made from like, you know, beets, it's going to be quite difficult. So even if I did find that the literature had this really great effect of beetroot juice, there's going to be some very real problems in application because it's like, okay, well, which brand and how much does it have? And is it consistent? You get the idea, right? Yeah. Now, in terms of what the study does find, studies do find in terms of supplementing with beetroot juice, um, again, I don't put it in the worth a shot. There was a recent um, 2023 paper. It was a meta-analysis, so pulling together lots of different studies, looking at nitrate supplementation on high-intensity performance. And... Um, 
They did conclude that there were some significant improvements in some performance metrics like time to peak power, how, you know, meaning how long does it take you to get to your 100% or maybe even your average power output, there were some significant increases, which sounds good. But when I go down and I look at the individual studies, um, and I try to look at the ones that had the largest effect, it appears that the increase in performance was still less than kind of a 5% change. Mm -hmm. And we kind of talked about that a little bit in, in some of our previous podcast on supplements. Like I don't like to draw a hard line, but when something is below 5%, we're still really well within kind of what we could expect from a placebo effect. So, you know, I'd really want to see stronger and more consistent positive effects above 5% for me to be like, yeah, this is, this is really a good a good supplement to recommend from a performance perspective and same sort of thing. No clear and consistent effects with when I looked at some of the literature related to strength and endurance. So definitely the evidence is not there like it is for caffeine or creatine for me to mm. recommend for people to do it from a performance perspective. Mm. And I also imagine that people can, if they did want to increase their, their nitrate consumption, they could just eat. It sounds like they could just eat more fruits and vegetables, right? And that can be the, that can be the, the road to the performance improvement that they're hoping for. I've led you back to fruits and veggies. Well, <laughs> technically, you know, vegetables are going to be higher than, than fruits, just so that the audience is clear. It's definitely the veggies that are higher in the nitrate um, concentration. But yeah, I think so. I mean, this is this is definitely anecdotal. I haven't done the controlled trial on it yet. But when I first launched the 800 gram challenge, the most common response I got to it was more energy in my workouts, better performance, better recovery. Now, some of that I think is simply because, you know, I'm part of the CrossFit community. And so the early adopters were CrossFitters. Yep. Um, so some of it's just going to be a biased pool. But I, I hear that comment a lot from people, just as much as I hear weight loss from the 800 gram challenge, people are talking about, you know, again, more energy in their workouts and so on. And so it does beg the question of, well, maybe can we just achieve some of these performance benefits from eating more veggies? I did find a study that looked at a high nitrate diet instead of supplements for performance, and they did find that some performance did improve, but it still didn't kind of crack that 5% level that I, that I like to see. Um, but because there's so many other reasons to include more veggies in your diet from, you know, just the nutrients you're getting to fiber to satiety, the controlling calories, like it's sort of a no brainer to me. Well, yeah, of course I'm going to recommend no surprise, eat more veggies in your diet, regardless of the performance potential. And maybe, yeah, maybe you get a little bit of bump there. I do want to note that the study, which was the high nitrate diet, um, really was achieved with not that many veggies. It was 40 mm. grams of spinach and 80 grams of collard greens, which in totals, you know, 120 grams. So it's really wasn't that high volume. And so yes, if people focus on some certain aspects of their 800 gram challenge, because they really wanted to try it from a performance angle, they certainly could and, and increase their nitrate concentration that way. And so they would do that within the 800 grams by maybe upping the veggies and lowering the fruit yep. and just yep. kind of making, skewing a little bit towards veggies and away from fruit. Yeah, definitely. You know, beets obviously can be up yeah. there, but yeah, a lot of times, um, the leafy greens are pretty high. And so if you kind of add some more of those, maybe that I would certainly recommend that for people over trying to supplement with, you know, beetroot juice for performance. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So that was, uh, nitrates, nitrites. I feel like that was a lot. How about we yeah. do a quick summary to wrap this thing up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just thought it was an interesting way to kind of go through this and pair this idea that nitrates are bad when we talk about processed meat, but yet they're quote good when we talk about kind of performance and improvement. Yet in reality, we're really talking about the same compound. And it kind of reminded me a bit of the discussion we've had around fructose, the molecule that's the same, whether or not it's in the high fructose corn syrup or whether or not it's in your fruit. But the way that it's packaged, the way that it's in food, the way that we eat it and consume it, that's what really changes. And we really have often hammered on things from the dose perspective, like the dose of fructose you're getting from the Coke is different than the dose of fructose you're getting from the orange. Yep. But in the case of nitrates, I think it's better explained not by dose, but just by context. Of course, dose is relative, relevant. We, we still see cancer risk goes up with, with higher processed meat consumption. But the point being, we have to look at the whole food. What are the other components in the food? How do we consume that food? Because that's going to give us the better picture than instead of just drilling down to just this one single compound of 
uh, one single compound of just nitrates. Um, so yeah, typically there's a lot more nuance than what might be presented in social media, but for the lay person trying to apply this, the application is still the same. It's like the majority of the diet needs to be whole unprocessed foods. It shouldn't be, you know, hot dogs, bacon, <laughs> pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you just ruined my Saturday night. So thanks. For yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. See, thanks everybody out there for listening. If you are not yet subscribed wherever you are listening or watching, please do. That will ensure you do not miss another episode. And speaking of EC, and I will be back next week for another episode of the Consistency Project. <laughs>